Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Sacred Sisterhood Podcast. My name is Mary Wright. I am your show host. And today, we're just going to see what wants to come through. So today is spring equinox in the northern hemisphere and fall equinox in the southern hemisphere, which means that we're coming into balance. We have equal hours of day to equal hours of night. And so this is a point of time to reflect, to reflect specifically for those who have just come out of winter like myself, to reflect on everything that we have cleared out, everything that we have worked through, everything that we have excavated this past winter. Because I don't know about you, um, (laughs) I am a very different person today than who I was walking into the winter time. Uh, I, yeah, I'm a very different person than who I was winter solstice and who I was fall equinox. And if you are listening to this from the Southern hemisphere, then today is very much a time to reflect on the harvest, the expansiveness, the abundance of everything that you created and everything that was offered to you this past six months as you were coming out of the spring summer descending down into darkness descending down into into winter time into stillness so when we are in these like big shift of season these big cosmic events such as equinox such as solstice what happens is we actually are gifted an opportunity to completely realign recalibrate and reset because it's the it's like the amount of light and dark is equalized. So it's a focal point of harmony. And so what happens is our soul completely clicks in, realigns with the timeline, with the frequency that we are here to embody at this point of time. So it's such an opportunity to use this as a springboard into what it is that you are feeling called to create, what it is that you're feeling called to expand into next. Likewise, if you are, you know, descending into stillness in the Southern Hemisphere, if you're basically allowing every, like the fields to go barren, which is such a potent time to really do the deep inner alchemical work that is required for the next year of spring, of fertility, of expansiveness. You can use this opportunity of realignment to really look at, that, look at okay, what is no longer working in my life that I am ready to clear out? What belief systems, what patterns am I ready to fully dissolve? Because you have the support this weekend with this equinox to align with what it is that you're here to do, with what it is that you're here to experience, to align with that highest version of yourself. And what happens is as our energy fields is preparing for this recalibration that just automatically happens on equinoxes, everything that's not fully on board with that, you know, those younger versions of ourselves, those stories, those traumas that we have experienced comes up for us to look at that are showing us our resistance, that are showing us what parts of us that are not fully on board. So you may have been experiencing like a really, really wild week or weeks leading up to this point of just a lot of emotion moving through you, a lot of energy Just a lot of kind of crazy stuff happening. And I'm with you. I'm with you. I felt like my heart was going to beat right out of my chest for a few days. And that was very much like my body adjusting to the higher frequencies that are coming in. Because, you know, there is a huge amount of energy that floods the planet in these turning points of the wheel of the year. Which is such a gift and a blessing because if you know how to really like tune in and use it, you really can quantum leap yourself forward. So, hmm. so what tends to end up happening is, you know, we end up moving through a big celestial event where our soul has completely shifted into alignment with our highest timeline. But then we wake up the next day and we return to the same habits and patterns that end up anchoring us to an old identity. So you start your day the exact same way. You flow through your day the exact same way. And your cellular memory creates the same experience. 
creates the same environment that you have been operating in for weeks, months, and so forth. So we really have an opportunity to look at this and say, no more, no more. I'm going to change it up. I'm going to operate from this, from my soul. I'm going to operate from this next version of myself and let her lead me forward. I'm no longer going to give my power away to those old versions of myself that tend to want to stay in the comfort zone, that want to stay small, that want to stay unseen, that want to stay unheard, because that's where we know safety, right? Now, hmm. Okay, now it's wanting to come through. So I recently hired a new mentor just within this last week, actually. And there's been a lot of shifts that have been taking place in my reality, in my business, in my experience since. And yesterday, what came through for her as she was channeling, you know, her higher self, her connection to God is less explaining Mary and more in your heart. Drop into your heart and speak what's what's from your heart. And as soon as she said that, I was like, oh God, Mm-mm. oh shit. You know, like I right away <laughs> recognized the huge amount of resistance that I had to that. And it's because the idea of opening my heart even more Allowing myself to be seen in my vulnerability terrifies me. And that's just, that's just because of the experiences that I've had in the past. That's just because of this little girl who didn't feel seen by the family she was born into. And when she became a teenager, she started to really rebel and seek for that love and validation in different places. And it wasn't that my family didn't love me. That's not the case at all. I was just different than my family. And so I felt very misunderstood most of my life. And so as a defense mechanism, I learned to put a lot of walls up around my heart. And this has been kind of my means of safety to to have my heart very guarded. And it's something that I know that I do in my marriage. I know that I do in my relationships, my friendships. And it's something I'm very aware of and something that I've been working through for really focusing the last six months of opening my heart more, letting myself feel more, sharing my love more. But when it comes to me doing that in my business online, that's a step out of my comfort zone. Why? Um, I've touched briefly on this in the past, but I actually I actually haven't really talked about it on any public platforms. Back in the summertime, I made a social media post that was really kind of like raw and up there in your face type thing, calling out the systematic racism that I had seen in prairie families growing up. That because I live abroad, I... I'm able to look at things from the outside perspective, looking in at certain things within the culture that I was grown raised in that are very old school and traditional that definitely could use some um, upgrading. And so I spoke out to this and it was not well received by those that I was raised with, that by my family, and it ended up being a huge battleground Um by a couple of my, well, actually four of my family members, very um, unconsciously reacted to this post and ended up um, saying some really horrible things about me and to me that weren't true, that, that maybe were true when I was like six, <laughs> um, but not as a 28-year-old woman. And... Uh, I, I basically lost my relationship with my, with my brothers and their wives and, and 
via a social media post. And after that, I really, really guarded myself on social media um, because it was kind of like a modern day witch trial in a sense. Like I felt persecuted. I felt ashamed. I felt, I felt as verbally assaulted, to be honest with you. And after that, I basically began to operate from this place that I, I wasn't safe to be seen because when I did put this, my own experience out there on Facebook, it, it was not taken well. And, um, it hurt me really bad. What, what ended up resulting, uh, what ended up resulting, um, from that. And so I've recognized since that it takes a lot more energy for me to share myself on, on social media, to, share different parts of myself to be, you know, regularly creating content and putting that out there on social media. And that's because of this resistance that I had with this fear of being seen due to this social media post. And so I've really been working through that. And the next layer is allowing myself to be vulnerable again on social media, to be less explaining the science and the spirituality of it and what the energetics are and more in my heart and what my own personal experience is and because when we I mean when we tell stories stories are an ancient way to connect with each other and so when we share stories now in this day and age people connect to that because we are so overstimulated with all of these images and all of this content that what we actually truly connect with is people being real, people sharing their inners, people sharing their heart, their soul, their vulnerabilities. And I'm being called up into that now. You know, I have been speaking a lot in my work about being authentic being unique to your own soul, sharing your own soul's light without the influence and impressions of other people. And I recognize that there was still a part of me that was hiding, still a part of me that wasn't feeling safe, it's still a part of me that wants to put all of these walls up as a means to protect this little girl that you know, this like little star-seeded girl that was born into an Alberta prairie farm family, um, which was awesome because I, I, you know, I got to raise lambs. I had horses. I was around cows. I was in nature. But it was also, there was a lot of things that were quite traumatic for my very sensitive soul. And it's time that I really allow myself to be fully, fully seen in my vulnerability. And I'm not just talking about in my business, but also in my relationships, my marriage, you know, like my husband could be pouring a bunch of compliments onto me and just really like giving me a heart share. And I will receive that. And it's like, I'll hold that and I'll slowly start to put it in my heart and be like, Ooh, that feels nice. That feels nice. But I don't let it just blast me to the point where then I, in return, give a heart share. It takes me time to re like receive it. It's like I slowly receive it. <laughs> and then I kind of sit on those words for a bit before I'm able to respond and, and return a heart share. And I know that that's just my own trauma response from just things that I've experienced growing up. Um... You know, when I was 16, I, I moved out of my parents' house and to live with a, a thug, basically. And I spent three years in a, an abusive relationship with an older man. And I was really caught up in drugs. And um, I was messed up with some really shady people. You know, like, it, it truly is amazing that I walked out of that time of my life without having any sort of a criminal record by association. Um 
because I, I saw things that I shouldn't have seen and I was with people I shouldn't have been with. And um, that point in time really, that, that period of my life really traumatized me, but I also recognize that it's something that I had to do. It's It was kind of like that fork in the road to align me with the work that I'm doing now because all of the decisions that I made after that were as a result of that that chunk that chapter of my life um and you know here I am but it's 12 years later I'm, I'm living in Austria with my Irish man husband and my beautiful dog who's 11 years old I'm I'm running a thriving successful soul-centered business which I get to choose my own hours it's an extension of my soul I'm helping I'm serving the planet. I'm helping people with their own healing. I'm helping women step into their own power because I know what it's like to not be in my power. I know what it's like to feel like a victim of my reality and continue to make choices that anchor in the belief that I'm not good enough. I know that. I know the depths of that. Um, And I know what it takes to overcome that. I know what it takes to continue to reprogram, to heal, to let go and expand into new levels of of yourself because I know what rock bottom is, 100%. I know what rock bottom is. And yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is my podcast is going to be taking a bit of a shift and my audience on this podcast is going to be like I want to say my guinea pigs but that's not right you're going to be witnessing my heart shares because I'm going to practice this heart sharing thing with my podcast um because you know you can't let fear dictate you you can't let fear hold you back and you know I just recently shifted into whole new level of my business a whole new level of abundance of receiving of expansion of power but I tell you like this was a glass ceiling that I've been hitting my head on for a long time and I just couldn't seem to get myself through on my own which is why we hire mentors Someone that's already broken through said glass ceiling. So they hold the energetics to help you crack through that yourself. And, you know, I tried on my own. I mean, I've been, I've kind of been in like a five month incubatory period between coaches. um, Just to allow myself to integrate. And I was going through such huge, huge mm, clearing out and dissolving of my belief systems over the winter time, which I've spoken about here on this, on this platform. And there was just like this level in my business that it couldn't reach. And leading up to this glass ceiling breakthrough, um, all of my stuff was coming up where I felt like I had slid backwards like 30 steps where it's like, why am I feeling this way still? I haven't felt like this in years. It was just everything was coming up. And that's what happens, you know, when we hit a glass ceiling. It all comes up, all those old identities, all those old stories, all of those younger self that just wants to be safe, that just wants to be loved and understood. And if you're not careful, you can get really caught up in that and give all of your power to that younger self where she's driving the bus rather than you. And then you end up not cracking through that that class ceiling. Um... So I, how I ended up shifting this is number one was hiring a mentor. Number two, number two was getting really, really uh, diligent again with my subconscious reprogramming, working with energy, clearing out the old. And number three was really anchoring into myself, my soul, my own personal connection to God and recognizing that. I'm actually not doing it alone. And that's the thing. Like as humans, we have this whole story that we're alone in this world and we're doing it alone. And it's like we have this separation, this illusion of separation in our consciousness from creator, from source, from God, whatever your specific language is around it. And so 
once you become aware that there's this separation, you can dissolve that and begin to lean back into the support of source of God and co-create with that. But it takes getting really quiet, getting really slow, dropping in deeper and deeper and deeper into yourself beneath all of the noise outside of yourself and really connecting with that and allowing that to guide you, allowing that to work through you, to play through you, to dance through you, to create through you. Hmm. So my friends, that's what's on my heart today. And I also have a really exciting announcement that Soul Series, a six-week group immersion, is now officially open for enrollment. This is a journey to return home to yourself. This is a journey to really uncover what your own unique soul frequency is, what your own authentic truth, your own messaging is beneath all of the, I want to say spiritual static and confusion that we tend to pick up by navigating all of the different truth seeking realms, you know, goddess circles and moon circles and this and that and the starseed stuff we can get really like caught up in the big glitz and the glamour of you know new age spirituality when it's actually just really simple it's coming back home to yourself coming back home keeping it simple and allowing that to be your guiding light so soul series is going to be an energetic field and a group experience to hold you in that To hold you in the dissolving that takes place when we unplug from everybody else's teaching so we can get to know what our own truth is. This is going to heal that tendency that we tend to get caught up in in the spiritual community of reaching outside of ourselves for our answers and rather reaching inwards for that answer for our guidance. And this is so incredibly important in the times that we're navigating as a collective as on the planet because there's a lot of noise out there and there's a lot of distraction out there and how we stay centered is that connection to self. And from that place, feeling into what is in resonance and what isn't. And letting all the rest go. Letting everything that's not in resonance go. To purify yourself. To clarify yourself. To find your own diamond light. So that when you share with the world, whatever your soul service is, it's like a diamond light that's shining through the static of the spiritual community. Because there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of people acting out of integrity. There's a lot of people just sounding like each other, regurgitating the same stuff, not being authentic, not even being grounded and embodied in what they're sharing and teaching. And so this is the way forward. Your own connection to self, your own connection to soul, your own connection to spirit. And so this is a specific frequency That is for those souls that are ready for this, that are ready for the simplification, that are ready to come home to themselves. So I'm going to leave the link in the show notes for you to check out to feel into if this is in alignment with where you're at. This is going to support you in getting into alignment, getting into alignment with your soul, with your soul service, because it's bringing you into yourself. So that you can create from that place. So that people feel you. Your own unique contribution to the planet. To your community. To this new paradigm that we are currently birthing as a society. So we start the second week of April. But know that as soon as you sign up. Even though we're not starting for another couple of weeks. 
there is a frequency that begins to transmit. Activation begins to take place and shifts begin to take place because you are basically agreeing to tap into this vibrational field. And so know that um, if you enroll now and we're not starting for a couple weeks, like there's already an instant alchemy that takes place. So on that note, I love you. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to my heart share. Perhaps you will hear a piece of yourself in my words. Perhaps you will find resonance. And I would love it if you join me in the Sacred She Pack group on Facebook. It is a beautiful online space that we have cultivated over the last few years that mm, the relationships and sisterhood in there is so beautiful. And it's a great place to just lean in for support during the times that we're in, during just everything that we're going through in our own spiritual and ascension journeys. So you can find us on Facebook at Sacred She Pack. And also don't hesitate to give me a follow on Instagram, Mary J Coaching, or add me as a friend, Mary J Wright on Facebook. So I'm sending you so much love. Have a beautiful spring or fall equinox. Many Ostara blessings. And we'll talk soon.